Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for another episode of STEM Girls Virtual. My name is Emily, and I'm here on behalf of Cincinnati Museum Center. On this show, we talk about different careers in the STEM fields, those fields being science, technology, engineering, and math. Today, we have Heather Knox with us. She's a senior design engineer with Ethicon. Heather, thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thank you so much. Happy to be here. Yeah, we're happy to have you. And Heather, to start us off with, you studied mechanical engineering in school. Can you tell us what mechanical engineering is? Sure. Yeah, mechanical engineering is the study of physics, math, and machine design. So in college, I learned how to apply math and physics to solve real world problems. Um, I took classes like calculus, dynamics, thermodynamics, and statistics. Um, I also learned a little bit about computer science, electrical engineering, and materials science. So most mechanical engineers uh, will end up working with products or processes after school. Uh, for example, a mechanical engineer probably designed the headphones that you're using uh, to listen to this and, and helped develop the manufacturing tools that created the small plastic shells of those headphones. Awesome. And um, engineering in general is so multi-layered. And like you said, you worked a little bit with electrical, computer science. It's so integrated. Um, and what made you want to study mechanical engineering in school? Yeah. So when I was in high school, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, I actually enrolled in a sort of woodshop type class uh, when I was in high school. And I really enjoyed that process of designing something on paper and on the computer and then making it and holding it in my own hands. So someone at that point told me, hey, that's what an engineer does. Uh, so I enrolled in an engineering career tech program at my school. And I really enjoyed that class because I got to problem solve. I got to make stuff with my hands and then actually use the math and science that I was learning in other classes. So I thought that class was a lot of fun and I knew I wanted to study engineering in college, but still wasn't really sure what I wanted my job to be or what even jobs were out there. Um, so I chose mechanical engineering as my major because it's really the broadest field of engineering. Um, and I thought if I wanted to narrow my path, I could do that later. Um, eventually, really the reason I stuck with engineering uh, was because I realized how much I enjoyed just solving problems. And I tend to have a natural curiosity about how things work and how they could be made better. And that really fueled me throughout some of those more difficult classes in college. And now that I'm uh, in the industry, I use that natural curiosity to solve problems that help people. That's great. And yeah, there's a lot of pressure on high schoolers to know when they graduate what you want to do for the rest of your life. So taking that approach of mechanical engineering is broad and later on I could narrow down if I want is a great way of thinking. And again, engineering in general is very integrated. So for those who like problem solving, wanna be creative, engineering is an excellent field in order to do that. And again, you could probably take a lot of classes on a lot of types of engineering and then later on specialize. So that's really neat how you approach that problem at a young age as well. Um, so that's just really neat. Heather, could you tell us uh, the company you work for? You work for Ethicon. Uh, what do they do? Yeah, yeah. So Ethicon is actually a part of the Johnson & Johnson Medical Device Companies. Okay. Uh, Ethicon creates medical devices. We're particularly known for sutures, which are the needle and thread-like tools that surgeons use to close wounds. And we've actually been making those since 1887. You can believe that. Yeah, oh, that's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> so we make uh, lots of other things. Uh, we make staplers, energy devices, trocars, hemostats, and robotics and digital solutions. As far as who works here, um, we employ a lot of different types of engineers. We employ electrical biomedical, mechanical, like myself, industrial and systems engineers. Specifically, I work in the research and development area at the Cincinnati campus, and I help create new medical devices. 
And I, I can only imagine what an 1897 suture would look like to a 2021, 2022 one. And I'm very glad I live in the 2021, 2022 era of yes. uh, medical suturing. Um, <laughs> just, oh my gosh, that, who 1897 in surgery, just, I'm glad I it's live. Wild in to th- it's wild to think that was even happening at that time. So it, it really is. Cool. Yeah. yeah, I you know, there is a lot of advancements in the soon to be 20th century that uh when this company was founded and they probably made great strides obviously in the time that they've been here. So that's that's amazing. And you you touched on you work on medical devices and what Ethicon makes and the particular ty- uh type of product you work on what can you go into that a little bit more of yeah. what you are specifically working on? Yeah, yep. Yep. So at the con, like I said, they make medical devices and and most of those devices are used in surgery. Now there's all types of surgeries, um, but I can talk about two kind of buckets of surgery, one which is called open surgery and the other is called minimally invasive, or you may hear it called um, laparoscopic. Yeah. So open surgery involves creating a large incision on a patient and and then performing the surgery while minimally invasive surgery requires very small incisions, uh, multiple, uh, usually about this big. Um, and then long tools are inserted um, into the patient through those small incisions. So we make products for both of those types of surgeries and the devices can do things like move around internal organs, cut away disease from those organs and then seal, seal the patient, seal cuts. Um, a lot of our devices are specifically used to treat medical conditions like obesity and cancer. Okay. And when I think of like an open surgery, we hear open heart surgery mm-hmm. and laparoscopic might be maybe getting your appendix out or your gallbladder maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Gastric okay. bypass is a really um, okay. common laparoscopic surgery. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Again, all the advancements in medical devices and medical uh, just surgeries and things are amazing to me and fascinating. And uh, Heather, can you tell us your role as a senior design engineer? What what do you do? And is a senior design engineer, like, what is that? Yeah, yeah. So design engineers here at Ethicon are really responsible for a medical device throughout its entire life. So we are the ones brainstorming new types of medical devices or how to make improvements on existing devices. We create prototypes of those devices and we use computers and math and science to predict how those devices will perform. Uh, We also partner with manufacturing engineers to develop the real device that surgeons will actually use in hospitals. And as an engineer in research and development, I get to do all those things um, for products like this. I actually have one to kind of do a show and tell. So very cool. This is our Echelon Flex uh, powered stapler. It's used in the minimally invasive surgery that we talked about. Uh, The the minimally invasive surgery requires tools that have a longer shaft portion. So that way they can be inserted through those smaller incisions that we talked about. Um, So this particular device helps cut and seal tissue. So that way the tissue can be maybe removed from the body. Um, An example of that procedure that uh, we kind of already mentioned is gastric bypass, where part of the stomach is removed. So even though this looks like a pretty, pretty simple device, a whole team of engineers influenced what this device does, how it does it, what it looks like, what these colors were meant to be, everything. Um, So they were responsible for creating, analyzing, and and testing this device. Yeah. Again, even just thinking what the colors are, uh, there's a purpose behind that. And that's, that's really interesting. And um, what are your main responsibilities as a, as the senior design engineer? Yeah. Yeah. So right now, my main responsibilities are to understand what our customers and patients need from our medical devices, and then integrate that into a brand new device. Um, So that includes using, like I mentioned before, math and science and computer modeling to predict how the device is gonna perform. Um, An example may be, uh, I use a computer simulation to help me determine if a certain material is strong enough to be used on our device. And then I might 
go and test a prototype, you know, made from that same material in our labs to make sure that my predictions align with reality. But honestly, every day looks different for me here, yeah. <laughs> which is really exciting. Um, some days I am sitting at my computer, you know, using software or using computer modeling. Um, some days I'm with a big group of people brainstorming new ideas and uh, writing our ideas, you know, on whiteboards and writable walls. Um, other days I might be building prototypes um, and then testing them in our lab. So it's a very exciting and evolving role to be in. It does. And um, a lot of people in other interviews I've conducted have talked about the variety in their role. You're not necessarily sitting at your cube 24 seven. Like you said, you're doing different types of testing, you're working on the computer, you're collaborating with team members. So it sounds like engineering in general just has a lot of variety to it to offer um, yes, yes. future engineers potentially. Yeah. Um, and you've already touched on this. So you work with a lot of different types of people at your job. How do you, how do you all work together? And I know that's a very like broad <laughs> question, but um, it does sound like it's a very uh, integrated um, role that you have where, you, again, you're working with a lot of people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's independent work for sure that I that I have to kind of go off and do on my own. But the majority of my time is working with a team of people. Um, so there's uh, uh, for this device, for example, um, you know, I, I would venture to say maybe hundreds of engineers touched this device before before it went out the door. Um, so that ranges from design engineers like myself, quality engineers, um, manufacturing engineers who help us develop plastic and metal components, software engineers who maybe write any sort of uh, software that goes into the device, and clinical engineers are a big part of what we do too because they're kind of the experts on how the device may be used. Um, besides engineers, we work with marketing and human factors group who influence the the form and the design a lot. Um, and hearing that hundreds of people are involved, um, just to me, uh, when it's medical equipment, makes me feel so much like better. <laughs> of, you know what I mean? Like the yes. fact that so many hands have been involved mm -hmm. in the process um, just shows the, the quality of what's being made and then being uh, used in operating rooms. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and again, you've kind of touched on this a little bit, but can you share some more steps when it takes what it takes to design and prototype a device? Yeah, yeah. So we use um, a process. It's it's if you're in school, you probably use something called the scientific method. You know, when you lay out a hypothesis, you test your hypothesis, and maybe you have to go back to square one if something doesn't go right. Um, it, that's really true of, of a design process as well. And we use something, it's an acronym, DMADV, uh, stands for Define, Measure, Analyze, Design, and Verify. Um, and I can kind of go through an example yeah. uh, if we want. Um, yeah, that'd be great. So, so let's say uh, with this device, I'm, I'm designing the handle piece here, this handle. Um, so the first thing I need to do is define what is this handle piece meant to be used for? Um, and, and why does it even need to be on the device? So I might do that by interviewing um, surgeons and nurses to get their opinions, or I may um, do that by observing surgeries and seeing how they might use this handle piece. So let's say they tell me the things that are most important to them is that the handle, when it's squeezed, it closes the jaws. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And they also want it to be comfortable because they're going to be holding it and they don't want it to break. So those are all three important things that I have to keep in mind. So the next step would be to measure some of those factors that are critical to the customer and critical to quality. So if I know that the strength of the handle is important, maybe I go out and find out, okay, what's the, what's the maximum squeezing force anyone could ever, any human could ever apply to this handle? And then I develop a test to test it uh, uh, to test the strength of the handle. Okay. Yeah. And so then the analyze phase, um, I may create maybe a 3D prototype of this, of this portion of the device and, and hand it to uh, surgeons and ask, hey, is this comfortable? 
Um, is it too big, too small? What about people with really small hands? What about people with really big hands? Is it comfortable for everyone? Um, so that's the phase where we really iterate, you know, uh, on the size and shape. Uh, I may also run some tests just to make sure that this actually works. Yeah. Yeah, that's important. <laughs> <laughs> so at that point, we probably have a really uh, a decent prototype that might meet the needs of our customers. And then we head into the design phase where we turn that prototype into a real device um, that surgeons can actually use. And usually we work with our manufacturing team to you know, make these metal components and make these plastic components. Yeah. Um, once we have, I would say, an almost finished uh, design, we verify the last step and we make sure, hey, does this device, did it end up meeting all that criteria that we laid out in step one that we found out is really important to our customers? Do, do I actually have evidence um, that demonstrates that I've met those requirements? Uh, so that, does, that process is, is really, in, in general, kind of what we do. And it's very iterative and cyclical, as you can imagine. Um, there's a lot of moments where, you know, we have to go back to the drawing board and that's totally fine. You know, that's why that process exists. Yeah. Um, and again, hearing that it's so multi-layered and there's steps to it just ensures again, the safety and quality of what's being made. And uh, this is a question I've asked a lot of people is, um, since Ethicon makes medical devices, how has COVID-19 impacted your job? Yeah, me personally, um, I, we started remote, remote working in like mid 2020. Mm -hmm. And um, my team is comprised of a lot of mechanical and biomed engineers. So in other words, people who like to work with their hands. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so brainstorming and being creative uh, can be really difficult in a virtual environment. Um, and uh, we found some technology ways around that. Um, but now that we're slowly coming back into the office, it's a big relief for all of us who like to kind of touch and feel parts sure. um, as we go through the design process. Yeah, yeah. That is totally understandable to you have to have your hands on it to, to get the job done. Yeah. Um, can you share a memorable moment from your job for like example, what's the best day you've had as an engineer? Oh, yeah. Man, there's so many good days. You know, I, I love being in the labs and, and really getting my hands dirty in there and, and doing the work. But um, I, I have to say, I, I got a rare opportunity a few years ago to do some traveling. And uh, in that traveling, we were interviewing um, nurses and surgeons and showing them some of our new devices. And being able to see, you know, their feedback and see them get excited about what we have to offer them. Um, that, that was awesome. Uh, if you've ever watched a surgery, uh, the surgeons and nurses have so much to think about and focus on during the surgery. Um, so I love the idea that something I worked on is actually going to help them be more effective in what they do. Yeah. Yeah. Getting that kind of firsthand experience to see that, uh, would be very memorable. And I like to ask this question to any of the female engineers I get to interview, because it's been shown that there has been a slight increase in the number of female engineers in the workforce, but overall the average is still kind of low. What do you think could be done to encourage more women and young girls to major and ultimately work in the engineering field? Yeah, yeah, this one's a tough one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a pretty big lofty question, but yeah. yeah. Uh, two, two things uh, kind of come to mind. I think the first is something that those of us already in the field you know, of engineering, male or female, uh, we need to be very intentional about making engineering accessible to everyone and yeah. making sure that we're pulling them in. So I'll take, you know, I'll use myself as an example. When I was first introduced into engineering, you know, I wasn't the top math student and I had never really used tools to make something. Uh, I didn't even know what an engineer was, um, but someone still made a point to to show me what it might be like and see if I have an interest in it. And then when I showed an interest, they really encouraged me to pursue it. Um, so that's number one. Number two, I would say is something everyone can do is just break away from, from stereotypes of who can be an engineer. 
Yeah. Uh, Emily is so funny. The first few times I told people I was a mechanical engineer, they thought I either worked on cars or drove trains. <laughs> and even though driving a train sounds really cool, yeah. um, you know, the, the truth is engineers develop all sorts of products and processes sure. and they work in every industry. I mean, mm-hmm. pick anything up in your home, an engineer worked on it. I guarantee you. Yeah. 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 So there's also a stereotype, I think, that engineers are sort of solitary creatures who don't work well with others and just like to do math all day. And I mean, there are some people who like to do math all day. Don't don't get me wrong. But (laughs) as we've already kind of talked about, I've worked with so many people all day. So you've got to be a good team player and have really good communication skills. So I think, you know, collectively, as we break away from those stereotypes, more uh, people will be able to to see themselves as engineers. And in fact, uh, Johnson & Johnson started a program called We STEM 2D, which I'm a part of. Um, It's an initiative to increase representation of women in science and technical fields. So the program does a lot with building partnerships to, you know, open new doors, create uh, these awesome moments to honor women in STEM 2D and offers mentorship to women, you know, throughout all, all stages of life. That is really awesome. And uh, we'll definitely share that as a resource. Um, That's a question coming up I have for you, but Yeah. yeah, mentorship, like you touched on is really important, that networking component. And again, breaking down those stereotypes that that is very true. Yes. Um, and I think, yeah, a train conductor or a train engineer is, yeah, the driver. So that's that's funny. I would not have thought um, that you would drive a train. So that's now, great. sometimes sometimes I say yes just to see what people will say. You know? Uh, yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, that's great. Oh, that's funny. Um, Heather, uh, what are some resources you could share with our viewers who would like to learn more about mechanical engineering and design engineering? Yeah, yeah. So. Um, J&J has a, a great site uh, through our We STEM 2D program. And that site is great if you're, um, you know, a young girl interested, if you're in college, or even if you're a technical professional. Um, so I'll, I'll give you that link. Yeah, that'd be um, great. J&J also has a series of interviews um, uh, with other J&J engineers and scientists that do things other than what I do. And so you can learn more about what they do in their roles. I'll send you that. Yeah. Also something kind of cool to to tinker around with uh, is uh, some free online programs that allow you to design, you know, sometimes shapes or, or products. And I'll, I'll send you a link to those. They're free online resources. Thank you. you have a computer, uh, you can download that. And, you know, it's fun just to, just to play around with that software sometimes. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing those with us. And we'll be able to share those within the event description as well. And then Heather, my last question for you is, and you've already given a lot of great advice, but what advice would you give to young women and girls who may want to pursue a career in a STEM and or an engineering field? Yep. Yep. So practical advice first. Okay. Yes. Um, so I would say seek out information from your math or your science, or if you have career tech at your school, ask them about engineering. Um, use the internet, look up videos like this to see what engineers do to see if it's something you'd like to do. Um, I would say besides, you know, studying math and science, engineers really need to be good communicators. So if you have the chance to practice your communication skills at school or maybe at a part-time job, you know, do that. Um, Lastly, biggest advice, um, I would say just let your natural curiosities guide you into something new and and cool, right? So if you're interested in how a certain product is made, look it up or take it apart, maybe. Um, Ask your parents first. Ask your parents first. (laughs) But yeah. (laughs) If, you know, if you're interested in in computers, uh, uh, try to find someone who, who does that for a living and ask them to mentor you. Um, again, the internet is such a great place to start. And also the, the resources at your school are a great start. So pursue just whatever thing you are curious about, I would say. Yeah, that's um, awesome advice. Yeah. Thank and then, you. And then one last uh, piece, I would say, you know, if you're 
a young woman interested in helping people, if you're interested in solving problems and being creative, then engineering is definitely for you. It's totally for you. Um, so, you know, studying and, and being an engineer can be difficult at times, but if it's really your passion, then you can do it. So, you know, stay positive, stay resilient, and just keep doing your best. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Just do your best. Heather, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, we enjoyed having you and thank you everyone for watching and we'll see you next time.